Hello. So in this episode, we are going to go through a Ruby on Rails feature named Counter Cacher. And basically, it lets us count how many child records a parent record has the right way. And we can keep this number inside our database so that we don't have to recalculate it each time. So how does it work? First of all, here we have a default uh, boilerplate Ruby on Rails application where we have users that can log in and uh, we have posts. So if we go into our uh, database, into our schema, we have uh, posts and users. And yeah, we'll first need to have an association between posts and users. So a user will be able to have many posts. Now at the moment you see a post does not have a user ID. That's why we'll, we'll need to add it to our posts. So we're going to type a uh, Rails generate migration, uh, add user to posts. And it will be user references. Okay, and let's have a look at the migration. So here it is, we add the user references to our posts with null false and foreign key true. Let's try to run this, Rails to be migrate. And we get an error. Why do we get an error? Well, because inside our application, we already have a list of posts and all of them are not associated with any user. So if we try to add user ID that is not null by default, we get the error because uh, we already have posts that have uh, no user ID present. So what we can do, we can uh, actually knowing that this is a boilerplate application, we are not working on any real data. We can either uh, drop our database and run this once again, or we can say, uh, we can just remove this null false. Let's try to remove null false and type rails to be migrate. And you see it worked. But again, we are working in a boilerplate application. That's why I would do it slightly differently. I would not run this uh, additional migration. I would just uh, add the references inside our migration for creating posts and recreate the whole database. So I would say uh, t dot uh, references, references to user, and null false and foreign key like this and now I'll just drop the database rails to be drop now rails to be create rails to be migrate yeah I made a typo migrate okay and now if I try to type rails to be seed actually we already have the gem faker installed and uh, I want to type Rails DB seed in order to create a few posts. Uh, I will get an error because we try to create posts without an associated user. So uh, yeah, we'll need to add the associations. I'm going to go to user.rb and say has many posts. And I will go to our post.rb and say that a post belongs to a user. So belongs to user. Okay, and uh, we'll need to go to seeds and say that we will associate a post with some kind of user, but we'll also need to create a few users inside our seeds. So I will say, let's say also 10 times do uh, user.create and to create a user we need an email that we'll get from faker internet.email and a password and well, a password would be something like uh, like uh, one, three, four, five, six. Yeah. So all the users will have this default password. Or you can generate a password with device, but uh, yeah, it doesn't matter now. So, okay, we'll generate a few users. And when creating a post, we will associate a post with a user. So we will say user ID will be a random number between one and 10. Okay, and let's create a few more posts. Let's say 100 times we create posts. And I'll type Rails to be seed. And this should create us uh, 10 users and 100 posts associated to uh, a random user out of these users. Okay, uh, it must have worked. So we didn't get any error. Let's start the server and see if it worked. I'll go uh, and sign up.
and here we have 100 posts. Okay, and we can actually show to which uh, user the post is associated. So I'm going to go to posts uh, index and display the user email, for example. So I'll have the user and we will have post.user.email. Okay, and here we have the emails of the users uh, to which the posts are associated. Now let's actually do one more thing. So when we create a post, we will uh, automatically associate the post with the current user that creates the post. Now, if I try to create a post, I press create post and you say, see it says user must exist. So we need to associate a user with the post. To do this, we'll go to our controllers and here we're going to post controller and we can do it in two ways. Uh, we can either go to the create action and say at post dot user equals current user and this should work. Let's just see. So once again, I'll press uh, create post and it uh, worked. Okay, and if I go back uh, to all the posts, going back, yeah, we see the post was associated with this current user. And another way, a kind of more correct approach would uh, be to create a post through the associations. So I would say current user dot posts dot new post params instead of these two other lines i will just uh, hide them this one and this one okay and let's see if this works so uh, again i'm going back and going to create uh, another post so present create post and okay it says uh, undefined method saved for nil class. Okay, it didn't work. Let's, uh... yeah, I think we should say at post equals current user post new. Yeah, this should work. So I will resubmit the form once again. And it seems to have worked. I will go to see all the posts. Yeah, it worked. And just to verify, I'll create another post. So we're going to create a post. And it worked. Yeah, so this way we can uh, create a post and automatically associate it with the current user. Okay, looks good. But going back to counter cache. So how do we count how many... Uh, posts each user has. Well, for this, we'll want to maybe have a list of users for 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 the start. So uh, let's go somewhere and uh, uh, create a list of our users. So for example, inside the, uh, yeah, we can create a new controller named uh, users controller. And inside we will have an index view to see all of our users. So just as our post controller, it is going to inherit from, sign, from inside application controller. And just we'll have users controller. And inside we'll have an action named index, def index. And we will say user equals user dot all. to be able to get all our users, okay? And now we'll need to create a root for this uh, controller action. So we're going to our config, uh, config roots. And here we're going to add the resources for our users. Now I will also put all the resources on the device. This is more correct, okay? And going here into our views, I'm going to create a new folder named users. And here we'll have a new file named index.html.erb. And here we'll have finally a list of all our users. So I will say at users.each do user. 
OK. And then I'll have an end statement. And uh, I will display, let's say, the email of the user and how many posts the user has. So we'll say equals user.email and equals user.posts.count. Okay, let's see if this works. So we are going to slash users and we see all our users and how many posts uh, they have. Let's just add some kind of break between each user. Okay, so we see the users and how many posts they have. And well, uh, this is not kind of an effective way to count the posts. So we go through each post and count uh, and see to which user it belongs. You see, it's uh, kind of time consuming. And if you have even more posts, it's going to take more time. Otherwise, we can try user post.length. And this is another method for checking how many posts the user has. But it isn't very effective, very efficient either. So uh, what we are going to use is counter cache and here is how it works. So we are going to add uh, this uh, counter cache to the belongs to association inside post.rb. So a post belongs to user, counter cache, true. And this counter cache is going to look for a uh, posts count uh, column inside our users table. So we're going to add posts count to our users table. We're going to stop our server and run a migration, Rails generate migration, add the posts count to users, posts count integer. Okay, and now we're going to our DB migrate and here we have add uh, column post count integer to users and we will also say default zero and null false. Okay, this is also quite important and helpful in the long term. And now we'll type Rails DB migrate. And uh, that's basically it. Let's see if it works. So here we have uh, our users, our post length, and let's also add the post.count or just post count, the database column that we have just added. So uh, here it is, you see it is zero everywhere. But if I go and create a new post, and go back to slash users, let's see what happens. So you see, the number was incremented by one. So what does this do? Uh, when we have this uh, going to cache it true, when a post is deleted or a post is created, this uh, counter increases by one or decreases by one. Let's try deleting this post or deleting a few posts. I will delete like this post. And we will see that the counter has uh, changed. Let's see if it has actually changed. So for this current user, the counter was set to zero. And if I delete another post, I think it will be minus one. Let's see. Yeah, it is minus one. So you see, we've added uh, this counter cache function when we already have an existing application with some existing data. And that's why we need to kind of reset these counters. We need to recalculate them. And how do we do this? Well, we can run a command in our console to do this. So it will be something like Rails console. And we'll say user.find each. Uh, and we'll say user uh, and user.reset counters. OK. And we'll say user.id. And the counter is posts. OK. And this should work. So it recalculated all the counters. We'll type exit. Now here is the command. Pay attention to this command. It is the one that you're going to need. I will just also add it uh, to the post.rb and comment it out just for it is so that it is easier for you to find it. Okay. And I'll start the server once again and see if the count is for recalculated. Okay. So going to our users 
and you see for all the users, the counters are correct. The database column post count equals post dot length and uh, should also equal post dot uh, count. Let's see. Yeah, so it uh, is the same. And basically that's uh, how it works. But the cool thing is that uh, this way it, it will be much faster for you to get the information. And it will also work easier for finding how many posts a user has for filtering by the quantity and so on. Now I will refresh this page and let's have a look. Well, uh, once again, I'll refresh the page and you see it was a really, really short query. So this is how the query looks uh, when we search for uh, only users. And here we have post count that is a user's database column. And here is how long it takes when we have post count or post length. Let's see. So uh, before we had, uh, yeah, 77 milliseconds. And you see it was a really short query. And uh, once again, I'm going to search for the users. And uh, you see, so it was a longer query and we were going through the posts. So you see this new approach with counter cache is really, really effective. And everything we did was we just added post count to our users uh, table and inside post.rb we set counter cache true and then we reset the counters and that's it. So this is how counter cache works and thanks for being with me. Have a nice day and uh, enjoy programming. <laughs>